Hey everybody, welcome back to this old trike. Good morning. It's about six in the morning. I'm out here in my shop a little bit before work because we are trying to fix this 1980 110 in the background. Let me show you what we're doing. So I brought this guy home the other weekend from my buddy Jim. Jim bought this for me. Where the heck did I get this from? I think I got this from my buddy Joe. Old Joe, we'll just say Joe, down in uh, Poughkeepsie in case he wants to remain anonymous. But uh, nice fenders. Doesn't have the mud flaps. Seat cover is very respectable. Just a touch of rip out right there at the back. Respectable machine. Missing the little connector boot from airbox to carburetor. It was missing a recoil, but I've since put that one on it that I had laying around. You'll notice I've got the cap off the points there. And if you can't guess what's going on based on that, I will let you know that I am chasing a no spark issue. So Jim had had the tank lined. I don't know that I ever had gas in it, so I don't know if it leaked before, but it doesn't leak now. Um, I've got gas in it. Running to the petcock, I've got no spark though. So we checked uh, the points. You know, I'm not an expert on a point system, but you know, as this spins by your cam, this is making contact and losing contact. And sometimes those contacts can have corrosion. So one way to, to help your, your system, if I could do this one handed, is to stick some sandpaper in there between the points. And just kind of remove any oxidation or a little corrosion that might be there and help your system make contact. We're definitely, we're definitely making contact. That wasn't the issue. So this, like most Honda three-wheelers, has a bunch of wiring in the Headlight shell, my switch and lens are over there. My book with my wiring diagram is here. It's always good to go by the book. So right now I've disconnected everything. And this sort of configuration where you disconnect everything allows the motor to just run. So you have no way to shut it off at this point. You'd have to choke it or cut gas or pull the spark plug wire or something to get it to stop if it starts. But this, doing this, helps you diagnose other things. So this is a point system, not a CDI. So in a point system, you have a condenser. Now if you look at this guy, he looks like he's seen better days. And based on the fact that I've disconnected the headlight and all the wiring, and I've cleaned the points, I'm at a point now where I've kind of narrowed it down to the either the coil or the condenser. But something else that I've been instructed to check per Mr. Mike Palmgren, you'll notice now there's a wet spot on the floor. Where are we? Where are we dripping from? What is that? Oh, that's a little, a little sniff test. Oh, we got gas. There's a little bit of gas coming out the overflow. Here's what I like about this machine. Like the overflow tube is still intact, still using the, the original hardware. I think this thing is a decent survivor. It's missing the chain guard. I might even have one in my parts hoard. But now we want to inspect this wiring right here coming out of, off the flywheel. And you know what? It looks pretty darn good. Goes underneath there. Because Mike tells me that can be a source of issue if the if the uh, insulation has been nibbled and you're grounding out here. That'll shut your system off. So since that looks to be intact, I 
think it's intact. I will inspect closer with some flashlight help. Since that looks to be intact, I'm thinking my coil is no bueno. And it just so happens. All right, I'm going <laughs> to hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm going to take you through the space I'm calling my bonus shop. Now this, if you've seen other videos, if you, ha if you haven't seen my other videos, you got to like and subscribe because they're all there for you. Go back, check them out. I get uh, messages from people sometimes and they say, you should do this. And then they'll describe the video that they think I should make. And you know what? I've already made that video. Go back, scroll down, check them out. But in a previous video, I, I point out what's going on in this area. It's still in progress. You know, let's not judge. Let's not be judgy, okay? I'm going to take you through what I'm calling my bonus shop to get to my spare parts hoard because I've got a coil on a machine kind of tucked away. So we're going to have to pull some things out. Okay, so brief update. You may remember this wall that was framed in. It was an overhead door. We've got sheathing on it. We've got electrical working well. Okay, in here, there's no heat yet. I'm insulating this wall. I don't have any insulation in the ceiling yet. I've got stuff to move so I can get insulation up there. This is my, <laughs> this is one of my spare, heart, spare parts areas. I'm also storing some woodworking equipment. This will be my dirty processing room, sandblast, spray paint. I'm gonna have some electroplating going on in here. Some, some high shelves up on the walls up there, probably one along this wall, just to keep things up out of the way and off the ground. And But right now, no insulation and it's cold. And this is my other area. You guys have been out here with me before, but I know that that little round headlight, that's a 1980 110. And I can see, I don't know if you can see the coil. Where's my zoom? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, what's that there? That grainy little shadowy piece is a coil. So we're gonna dive into this little area. I'm gonna pull that tote away and kick that 70 to the side and see if I can get that out a little bit. Um, I will report back in a minute. So that didn't take too awful long, a couple minutes. I had to move some junk. This, uh, this 110, was a freebie, I think a buddy of mine, another buddy named Jim actually, had this and said if I wanted it and thought I could use it, uh, I could have it, I just had to come get it. So I'm glad I did, because now I'm gonna take this coil, which is just two Phillips head screws. I disconnect this wire, I pull the ground off, and I've already taken the, the spark plug wire off. And we'll be swapping here shortly. And you can see this looks a lot better than the other one. Maybe it uh, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But we're going to find out. So here we go. Okay. That took about two minutes. Let me tell you about something that if you're working on old Hondas, you really should invest in. And that is a JIS screwdriver set. So this is a Vessel Vessel brand, upside down, so you got to work for it a little bit. Because that screw right there, just like every other what appears to be Phillips head screw on this machine, they're not Phillips heads. They are JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard. So the fitment of this tip 
as a JIS in that screw head is 200% better than a Phillips head screwdriver. So when you're working on these and you'll see, you know, Phillips head screws all stripped out or like this one right there, like that one, when you get your screwdriver out, you're like, oh boy, I hope she doesn't strip out with a JIS. It bites right and saves you so much headache and hassle. Like when I put the screwdriver to these screws out there, which have been on there for 41 years now, they, they resisted up to that point where you hear that and then it just un, unscrews. But you'll see the condenser looks a lot better. I suspect that is the culprit. But we'll see. We're going to get this swapped around and plugged in. And we'll report back to you very soon. So it was almost like foreshadowing. I knew something was going to happen. The rearward mounting screw that held the coil on, somebody had rounded that over, so I couldn't even get the, the screwdriver to bite on it. And I messed around with it trying to, to get some vice grips to back it out. I was even going to just try to let the, the new coil hang free so I could just test it, but I wasn't going to be able to ground it out properly, so... I got the drill. I'm drilling off the head of that screw at this point so I could pull the old coil and just let the uh, the new one sit there. But once the head's off, I'd, I'd have a whole bunch of threaded shaft from that old screw to, to grab onto with the vice grips to unscrew it. But this was just to save some time and keep moving because this is all before work and I gotta get to work here shortly. And that's what I'm doing. Doing that allowed me to get the ground to mount through the coil to the frame, which is what I wanted. Okay. Moment of truth. I'm going to spray just a little bit of starting fluid just to help the process. Let's see. So it's just the coil. Well, let's let's wrap this up. All right. Well, that was a neat little exercise. So we swapped the coil out. The old coil is gone. I had a little issue here with a, a bolt that the Phillips head had stripped out on. So it was kind of timely that I mentioned that. Uh, but it didn't take only a couple pulls and it almost idled all on its own. So obviously needs a little bit of a, a carb cleanup since we got a little drippage on the floor there. So probably the, uh, the needle valve seat is just a little bit dirty. So we'll pull the carb before we commit to putting this all back together. Have my daughter clean it up a little bit and 
We'll capture that in another video. This thing is also getting some attention. This carburetor didn't make sense to me because this chassis, this machine looks, looks pretty clean with the carburetor I pulled yesterday morning. And the carb lever is stuck in place. You've got corrosion on surfaces that it, the condition doesn't match. I'm sorry, I'm missing it. The condition does not match that of the chassis. So going to, uh, I think I'm going to look for a different option. I've spoke to Mr. Mike Pongren about this, and I think I'm going to place an order with him later today and give him the results of this little exercise that we went through. Thanks for watching so much. I'm glad it worked out the way it did. It's always, uh, it's always nice to have a little victory to get your day going. And don't forget to like and subscribe like we mentioned. We'll have a cleanup video for this coming up. We'll have a, a little trip to my buddy uh, Ryan Cogswell is coming up. Um, you got to see some of the cool stuff he's he's got and has done at his property. And I've got a, another couple things up my sleeve. So make sure to like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on those next videos. Thanks for watching.